Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead Fat Cat, <laughs> here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter in law, Beatrice. Razor Blade. We are here to talk welcome to Plathville and also to wrap up unexpected yes since we weren't here last week and i do want to apologize it's for that fault. i wasn't feeling very well <laughs> i was you know just in repose i yeah. was taking my time was resting yes, mommy totally needs to rest every now yeah. and then but yeah i was having a hard week so we are back though and we're gonna get all the way into it but before we do we just want to issue you a disclaimer please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words we have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize for it so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another doctor baby but if you're down to party and get into some fundamentalist christian booties Ooh. not literally yeah well. maybe <laughs> i don't know well welcome to this dumpster yeah and if you are down to party with us be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we just finished up our coverage of milf manor 2 oh my god <laughs> and we need more stuff to react to that was so ridiculous it was crazy and fantastic yeah. i had a lot of fun and me too but that's where all the extra content is and yeah. we do put a lot of stuff up there we so do. if you're looking for some more raccoon action go to patreon yeah and if you are on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe everything you do helps us to grow in the algorithm and so thank you in advance thank you all right so do we want to talk about last week's welcome no. to Plathville? <laughs> it was so deeply boring so boring okay here's what i want to talk about okay because it's slowly become very apparent to me over the episodes as they've been progressing but especially last week and this week just how produced mm. every scene is yes just how like fake mm -hmm. it all is and mm -hmm. i am bored yep and i am bored with your sex party honey i'm bored with your dumb wigs which is shocking i mean <laughs> i love a dumb wig <laughs> but i'm bored with all these birthday parties I and know. stupid meetings and it's not authentic. I know. I don't know what happened. Because of the divorces, like now we have to produce every single scene. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Sister Wives, but at least with Sister Wives, there was still the dysfunction and it was still kind of interesting even though they were doing dumb shit. But this is like painful. It's really bad. Like Micah and his girlfriend oh walking God. on the beach. So and awkward. I want to know more about her, but I don't want to know about her like this. Right. And I want to know what's going on with Barry and Kim, but not like this. And even in, in this week's episode with Mariah meeting her weird rando friend I know. to have a cinnamon bun and talk about this mystery man that nobody's actually really talking about, though. Mm -hmm. It's like there's all these potential storylines that are, in fact, really interesting. Yeah. And that we could really get into. And I say it every week, honey, the DUI, mm -hmm. the adultery, all of it. Like we could be talking about this in a very real way. And I think that would make for riveting television. Oh, But totally. instead we have this produced shit and honestly to me it's the death knell of this program like if you keep doing this production nobody's gonna want to watch oh not at all but then you have a bunch of people online that are like oh my god i only watched the show for olivia like her stories are so interesting and i'm like i don't know where I you're literally seeing can't. all of that because i look at the things that tlc posts on the show and it's like comment after comment saying why is olivia on this show what is olivia bringing to this show why does she want to be on this show so it seems like a lot of people are objecting to her being there. But then you go up on the Reddit. Yeah, that's there's a lot I'm of people. It. OK, there's a lot of people who want her there. A lot. For Why? Some reason. I'm like, all of her storylines are also fake and produced and boring. Like all of these producer planted friends. Like uh, it's uh, not just uh, Olivia's. It's Mariah's. It's Micah's. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who are these people? I don't care about them. And at the sex party, we have recycled producer plants from when Micah was in L.A. It's the same boring ass weird people. But but now they're at Olivia's sex party. I know. This is so dumb. It was super dumb this week and last week. 
What makes Olivia interesting is her deconstruction of her former fundamentalism. Like, that's an interesting story. I guess. And I think she tries to get at it. But in my opinion, she does it in sort of an ass backwards way because she seems really intent on always just blaming the plaths for everything Mm -hmm. as opposed to talking about her inner world and what brought her here and kind of getting into the meat of the matter. Yeah. It's all this superficial, petty bullshit. Like she's constantly jabbing at Ethan without coming out and saying, Ethan didn't know how to fuck. Oh, you know, she's definitely saying that. But she's been saying that on Instagram too. Just say that. It's much more interesting if you sit and face the camera and you talk about your sex life with Ethan. I guess. That would make riveting television. And Ethan, talk about Olivia. Like, get into it. Like, you shared all of these years of your marriage, almost your entire marriage, Mm -hmm. with all of us. And we watched it and we had to suss a lot of it out with our raccoon monocles. Yeah. But talk to us like we've been here on the journey with you. Don't make bullshit up and then feed it to us every week. I'm getting tired, hoodie. Oh, I'm tired. I'm getting tired of it too. And Olivia is lying. She's mm-hmm. changing her story and she's rewriting how history so? in this episode. She's talking about like how she's always wanted to be on the farm. She's always wanted to live on a farm life, mm, but right. didn't want to tell Ethan because she's scared about that, which is a bunch of bullshit. Because for five seasons, we've been seeing her say, I want to live somewhere out of a small town. I want to live in a big city. I want to live somewhere fun I want to travel. Cool. I want to globe trot. Yeah. So like that's a, that's a lie. Talking about how she didn't know anything about sex when she said in like season one and two she was given ethan blowjobs in the car in the church parking lot like come on right and we're not dumb kind of blaming ethan for their bad sex life yes. when you were both in that sex life you were both and in you a were fundamentalist cult. contributing equally olivia mm-hmm. but i mean the way she talks about it is she wanted to try different things and maybe ethan wasn't super into doing and that that's fair yeah. okay but like let's just talk about that more right Let's have more conversations about that. I just really don't like the road that this show is going down. Like, I think if they continue along this vein, we are probably not going to have another season. Yeah, probably not. Like, for what and for why? I mean, yeah. but Or it's just going to turn into the Olivia show. Which I don't want to watch. No. Because it feels like TLC is just putting a lot of Olivia. Like, this whole episode this week was, like, half Olivia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't care. I literally don't care. Unless we get to see your new weird boyfriend who's kind of dinky looking in my opinion. (laughs) But like, we're not seeing that. We're just seeing you go to sex parties and speed dating next week. And And allude to a relationship with somebody long distance, like not actually talking about the thing. Yeah. I really, really hate that. Me too. So as I understand it, though, there are only two more episodes. What? Next week. And then the week that Sister Wives launches, that's supposed to be their finale. I could be wrong, but I think there's only two more episodes. And I'm like, wow. what have we done? I mean, yeah, we got into a little bit of the divorce between Ethan and Olivia. And I was I was riveted. Me too. But we didn't get into enough between Barry and Kim. Not at all. We're not talking about the division of assets. We're not talking about like where are the kids going mm. and how that's working. Like, we didn't get into any of that, and we're almost done with the season. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, too. Well, and then if I have to hear Mariah plug her album or her (gasps) song, like, one more time, I'm going to throw something at my TV. Yeah, I feel like the only reason she's talking about this mystery guy is so that she can reference her upcoming album. 100%. I don't care. That's all it is. Nobody Nobody cares. (laughs) about your stupid music video but we're gonna have to hear her sing next episode okay guaranteed i also feel like the stuff with micah and his girlfriend like how he keeps saying like i don't know if i'm gonna if i'm making the right choice or if we're in love blah blah blah. i feel like it's setting up for like end of season proposal or something crazy like oh, that God, please don't do it i mean please oh don't the red flags are flagging i mean they are a weird couple do they we are wanna, so strange do we want to just talk about it yeah let's talk about just it about the beginning of the episode which yeah them let's get at the into beach it. yep with her wearing a whole ass dress and makeup a full beaded face hair done what going to the doing? beach i don't understand and the last time we were here and we were talking about the show i'm like there's just something that's not connecting for me here there's something that's just off and as i was watching them at the beach it really is like her social awkwardness mm-hmm. she seems deeply self-conscious yeah and very uncomfortable in front of the camera yeah so much so that i feel bad for her because Micah is such a natural in Mm -hmm. front of the camera it's super easy for him and she's just floundering yeah 
I felt bad for her. And this week she also released a Instagram post with some younger pictures of her. And she was talking about how everybody's been bullying her and harassing her. And she's like, this is who you're harassing, this young girl, like be nice, spread kindness, whatever. And people in the comments are assuming that the bullying comments were like about her gender identity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So people have been making comments about her appearance and her possible gender. That's not cool. Yeah. So I feel bad for her because she- I feel bad for her too. Comes on camera and then people just are trashing her. Right. And so maybe that's why she was a little reticent to come on camera. Yeah. But at the same time, if you come on camera, especially on TLC, you are going to inherit a rabid audience of uh-huh. people with monocles yep. who are going to be looking into your life. And so this is kind of what comes along with it. I'm not saying it's right, but like you ought to expect it. Of course. People are fucking crazy like the people are so much worse than us though but we're not leaving comments and we're not of being course fucking not. mean no like some people like especially on reddit i'm like you guys are the worst people ever mm-hmm. like just some of the things that people say so but again though like you said it's like i don't know what you expected coming on tv you should have just stayed private if yeah it was especially that if you have like social awkwardness yeah. or something that keeps you from being natural because she comes off so wooden mm-hmm. and like she doesn't want to be there she yeah. is like interpreted by me as being very condescending to micah i'm going to mm-hmm. give you a little humility or like very controlling mm-hmm. i just don't feel good about this relationship i'm sure she's a lovely person i don't know much about her at all but just in their interaction i'm like micah you are in danger girl don't I do mean. it and the amount of times that micah brings up navigating relationship conflicts and dealing with arguments and stuff i'm like dude you guys have not been living with each other that long to Mm -hmm. be talking about conflict and how much you guys argue like why are you arguing so much though like that's weird i mean you should be in the honeymoon phase of your relationship like the first year is supposed to really show you the potential of the relationship and then you get into the nitty-gritty you start living with one another and you kind of peek behind the curtain maybe that's where they are in the relationship relationship but I just feel very worried for him because I think he's got a big heart Mm -hmm. I think he has a sense of adventure and exploration and I think he's getting tied down in this relationship to someone who has a whole lot of expectations for him Mm -hmm. that he's really ultimately never going to be able to fulfill yeah no which is going to cause her to nag and browbeat and Mm -hmm. condescend based on what I'm seeing that's just my fake psychic prediction yeah. And so I'm very worried. And he keeps talking about how, like, I love her, but I'm not ready to get tied down. He keeps implying that he's not ready for marriage. But if he pulls a proposal out, girl, at the end of the season, I'm just like, none of these people have the ability to learn. None of them. Honestly, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. It's either going to happen at the end of the season or like after the season's over and he's going to be like, oh my God, I love her. We got eloped or some shit like that. I'm calling it right now. My fake psychic prediction because that's what it feels like. Because he's saying all this shit like, oh, I don't know if I'm making the right choice. Like we're in love. It's like a genuine love, but I wouldn't say it's like full on. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to commit. Like he's playing both sides Mm -hmm. of it but then you're living with this girl like it's so bizarre what it's giving me is i don't have a job (laughs) (laughs) what it's giving me is like she works really hard as a real estate agent Mm. she makes money and i don't have a college education and i don't have a future before me and so i'm just gonna live (laughs) off of this professional woman i mean that's what it's giving to me i mean that makes sense too Mm -hmm. i could totally see that Yeah. And I mean, he is correct to worry about his future because if Plathville goes off the television this season or next season, like, what are you going to do with your life? I think he still models, though, right? I don't think he does. Oh, he's done with that? No, I think he's referenced that this season that he kind of walked away from that. Yikes. And he wanted to be an actor and he's not doing any of that. Well, he's going to have his fencing business. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it's hard work honey i know for such a pretty baby I know, but all right real. and she gonna make you work too oh yeah dig that trench honey definitely but they're weird and then we have um to say the least <laughs> then we have olivia and lydia grace 
going to milk cows for some reason. This is what I'm saying. In LA. A produced scene. Hey, what about a scene where you bring your sister in from Arizona and you guys go milk cows like you used to? And- Why? Who wants to see this? Nobody fucking wants to see this. And them having this weird little competition in front of this random Farmer Joe guy like he gives a fuck. Who's probably just a lech and just looking at their booties because they're so beautiful. He's like, oh my God. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Then this didn't look like a farm that I would want to go to. Mm -mm. It looked like a slaughterhouse farm. (laughs) A little bit. I felt very sad for those cows. Yeah. But whatever. Let's make a scene. Let's make some television. But then Olivia saying that she wants to be back on a farm and like wants the country life and then saying, throwing Ethan under the bus and being like, I didn't want to tell him that because then he would have trapped me in Cairo and I would have ended up a handmaiden and I would have had 10 kids and been barefoot and pregnant. Right. And I'm like, Okay. Very melodramatic. Yes. And maybe if you had said something like that to Ethan, he would have been heartened because I think that's where his heart has always been is in the country. Yes. On a farm. Um, But I don't believe you. Mm -mm. I believe what you were telling Ethan during the course of your marriage was that you wanted to go to St. Lucia. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to LA. I want to travel. I want to have all of these experiences. And that is what he was trying to accommodate. You never used the farm or country living as a sort of goal for your marriage. Mm -mm. Not at all. And it just pisses me off because she's just going back and forth and like this is why i was saying she's rewriting history mm-hmm. and trying to act like that's what she's always wanted is to be back in the country and she misses that life i'm like no you don't you're running away from it like just be real with yourself and real with everybody else and like real even with ethan and be like i don't love you anymore man i want to fuck somebody else fair i mean that's fucking fine but like this whole back and forth and like she's so lost that's what i see and i i don't want to get mad at that because we all have our own journey and we're all discovering ourselves and especially when you're young in your 20s like you don't fucking know what you're doing i'm still in my 20s i still don't know what i'm fucking doing mm, yeah, i'm you still, kind of do but i'm still figuring shit out like this is what i'm trying to the say the difference between somebody like you and olivia is that you admit that you don't know what the fuck you're doing yeah and you're not putting on all of these airs of sophistication and illumination and um, enlightenment exactly like yeah. having all of the answers or putting on a persona of progressiveness without see like i would much rather you show me who you are through your acts and your deeds instead of always constantly telling me who you are and what you believe and what you want like show me and do it and then i will believe it and so there's a lot of talk coming from olivia about who she is what she believes but i mean when it comes down to brass tacks honey Mm -hmm. some hypocritical energy in the ether that Uh i'm sniffing Yep. Just be real. Like, you don't have to have it all together. Of course. You can be a 23 or 25-year-old woman who doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. That's what I was doing when I was 25 years old. Don't pretend to have all of your shit together or to have the number of all of these people that have been in your life. Exactly. And to be able to sit in some space of higher vantage point and judge these people, these grown-ass adult people. Like, you really don't have the life or world experience to do that so just stop doing that you can judge them inwardly but stop saying it oh yeah that's my problem with her and she's still on instagram and on tiktok like she just posted a tiktok recently and it was reposted to instagram where she was talking about some weird dream that she had or that kim plath had or something like that basically the whole tiktok was a bunch of bullshit but in the tiktok she said kim plath groomed her to be ethan's wife so she was essentially manipulated and groomed to be in this family that she didn't want to be in at all as if she had no agency at all and people are like actually calling her out for it and being like you were an adult like i know you were a part of a cult but you guys were both part of that ethan grew up the same way you did like why don't you take ownership for like your choices in the matter Mm -hmm. she's just acting like i don't know a victim well i think the word grooming is incendiary it's harsh yeah it's a very harsh word i mean i think the spirit of what she's saying like that Kim mentored her and guided her into a relationship with her son based on the blueprint that Barry and Kim had for their kids. I think that's probably valid. I'd like to hear more of that. But when you use a term like grooming, Mm -hmm. then you've lost me. Now you're just trying to go, you're on your campaign again, Olivia, trying to malign these people, which I don't think is fair. 
Well, and then I'm like, where's the accountability for your parents in the matter too? Like mm. they were doing the same thing. Like if you're saying Kim Plath groomed you, so did your parents then. They groomed you to be a part of this lifestyle, to be a good wife and to be Ethan Plath's wife as well. So like, why can't we call both sides out? Why is it just the Plaths are such evil well, fucking terrible didn't people? didn't she make an Instagram? I thought you sent me an Instagram where she was talking about her father recently, something about daddy issues. And I actually watched it. And let me just say, I really liked her point because she was objecting to the term daddy issues. And she's like, my father was the one with the issue. My yeah, father yeah. was the one who didn't parent me gently. My father was the one who was abusive, although she didn't say it outright, but she wink winked at the camera as if to say her father was abusive. And she's like, so don't visit my residue from my father on me and call it daddy issues. No, I'm just dealing with the shit that was left in the wake of his issues, which I support and I really liked the way she framed that mm -hmm. so it seemed to me she was calling out her pop and calling out her family a little bit but in terms of like how much like she's definitely goes in on the plaths way more yeah but then again they're the ones with the show I guess but still like why aren't we calling out your family though like get to the root of your issues which is the fact that you're unhappy with your family which Ethan calls out later in the episode he did he addressed that and that's based like that's so true that's where all of it lies for her but that's that's what's frustrating for me is like she just acts like the plaths are like so terrible and I'm like they're probably not that bad <laughs> I, I don't know I mean sue me I just I don't think that they're as bad as like probably her family I think her family was worse because in that video on Instagram, she didn't outright like call out her family, but in the comments, she said that her dad was like abusive and hit her and her siblings and stuff like that. And that was it. It's like a very minor thing that mm -hmm. she says, but then talks about Kim Plath grooming her. And it's like, right. okay, where's the right. balance here? Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of that. Well, maybe she's not ready yet to deal with those parts of her that have been so deeply wounded by her father and her mother and her childhood. And what Ethan was saying, I think we have said a number of times uh -huh. is that she's using Ethan and she's using the Plaths as some sort of an effigy or a symbol upon which she's trying to exorcise all of this stuff out of her being. Yes. She's doing it the wrong way, but that's what she's trying to do, which I am in tremendous support of. She's just doing it in a way that vilifies all these people. Yes. Um, I think Kim and Barry deserve some of that vilifying personally, because while Ethan grew up the same way as Olivia, mm -hmm. Kim didn't. I don't think Barry did. True, I don't yeah. think they grew up in fundamentalism. I think they adopted that at some point when they were adults and then brought their kids into that. Mm -hmm. So they deserve a lot of that blame, in my opinion. Like, what do you mean blame? Like the... Well, like the blame that she's pointing in their direction. About the religious aspect? About the religious aspect oh, yeah, yeah. and the way that they might have guided her into this lifestyle. Yeah. The way that they said she had demons living in her. The way that they judged her. And I'm sure that they did. The way that they were probably very hard on her in the beginning of that marriage. Right. I believe that. Yeah. And so they deserve to be vilified. And she has every right to call them out. But it's like, I... Ex I I like your point, which is, okay, but what about the stuff that is auto-generated within you that's causing you to act out in all these other ways that's, that are going to affect your life? Like, are we truly looking at that as well? Is she in therapy? I know she talks about therapy. I know that there was one season, I think three, season three, yeah, where she wanted Ethan to go to therapy because she was going to therapy. But I'm wondering if she's still in therapy. I hope that she is because I think she has a lot that she needs to excavate oh i agree 100 percent. and like she's a work in progress but that's the thing that's frustrating for me is that she like we've said like she's just not real about what the real issues are like she's quick to blame everyone else but not like your own family not like these other people that are issue like the problem it's like we said a couple weeks ago when we were talking about like ethan her she was saying that ethan's like homophobic or whatever i'm like why don't you call out your brother though too right like that you had on the season like just prior to this like he's also a huge raging homophobe like had it in his instagram bio yeah, and everything he's out as a homophobe i mean he's I mean, out and ethan proud is not i mean yeah. we can intuit a few things about ethan but he's right. never outright said the things that nathan has exactly but you're not calling that's my problem with her is like she's so quick to villainize all of the plaths because they hurt her that's the issue there mm -hmm. like you can be hurt and you can talk about your struggles like me as an example like i've have problems with my own family right but i'm not gonna sit there and say that they're 
horrible, awful people because they're my family still. Even though they did terrible things, like, I don't know, but maybe that's just my own perspective. Like, I know it's probably not the same for everybody. I don't know. I really respect that point, though, about Nathan, because not only has she not called out her brother, but she platformed him on the show. Uh She brought him up on the show. She must have known what his proclivities and his beliefs were at that time. And then he's gone on to tell us all what he actually believes. And like, you haven't spoken out against it. So why are you so selective in your progressiveness? Exactly. Seems like a problem. Yep. That's what I think. And then moving on, we have Ethan and the little girls at the farm. I loved this scene. Me too. And I want more of this. Yes. Instead of the sex education we get into later. Oh my God. Checking under the hood. Girl. I uh, will get there when we'll we get, get there. there. So Ethan sits down with the three littles, which yep. is Amber, Mercy, and Cassia. Mm-hmm. And he kind of wants to have a conversation or just at least open the floor for some space around a conversation concerning his divorce from Olivia. Like, do the girls know? And do they have any questions? And so he does that and they don't really have any questions. And Amber says something like, well, I really just want to be here for him and listen. And she is so beautiful. I know. All these girls are. But Amber's eyes. I know. Her sapphire blue eyes. Girl. Oh, my God. So gorgeous. Yes. And also so compassionate toward her older brother. I know. But it's in this scene that we have Ethan also talking to the camera directly Mm -hmm. about some of the things that happened between him and Olivia. Yeah, he said he's been reflecting a lot about what things went wrong between them, how he could have fixed things, how he can hopefully fix things in his next relationships and things like that. And then we flash back to last season's infamous comment that he made about how Olivia doesn't cook him three square meals a day and how that's the key to a man's heart and women have their place in society Mm -hmm. and they have their specific roles. And so he's clarifying. He never said that. Well, he said they do have specific roles. Yes, but not in society. Right. Right. But because this year he's saying, I didn't mean all women. Exactly. So he's not talking about society. Yeah. This. So yeah, he's clarifying his comments from last year saying, I don't mean all women should be in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant, basically. He's just like, I felt like I was most loved when Olivia was cooking meals for me all the time. Because in the first few years of our relationship, she cooked all the time. And that made me feel really special, made me feel really cared for. And then all of a sudden, she stopped and didn't cook anything for like two years. And he was feeling really resentful because Ethan doesn't know how to fucking communicate or use big boy words. He kind of let it build up until it kind of blew up and exploded on this scene from last year. And he said it in the wrong way. So he's like, I f- deeply regret how I said it. And if I could have said it differently, I would have. So what right. did you think about this? I thought that it was good. Me too. I thought that it showed that Ethan was recognizing the things that he has done wrong, Mm -hmm. specifically some of the things that he said that were wrong. I think he was trying to explain how he receives love. Yeah. And I think that's valid. Me too. Now, when you want to take it down to gender roles and women should be this and men should be that, well, you'll miss me with that. And I I don't subscribe to that. But I can see how a guy like Ethan, who is only 24 or 25 years old and who came out of essentially a cult and who only ever saw that demonstrated to him, I can see how that would be one of his beliefs or value systems. Sure. Like, And I need him to deconstruct that because Mm -hmm. not all women are going to do that. And we have a lot of women out here who are wonderful and they work or they don't want to fucking cook and a lot of men who cook and such yeah but that's just the noise of what he said what he was really saying is this is how i received her love and then all of a sudden i wasn't receiving it in the same way and we have to look back at the seasons because there was a lot that was also going on at the time we've got them going to joshua's memorial we have jamaican me crazy we have olivia putting all of these expectations on to ethan not the least of which is to change his geography every year and to take certain stances with his family so he's got all of this bullshit happening in his marriage at the same time as she's withholding now Mm -hmm. this essential expression of what he perceives to be her love so that's what he was trying to get to Uh uh-huh but he's Dumb. He's dumb and he's emotionally i think he's emotionally intelligent but he doesn't know how to express it he's pretty stunted and i mean can you fucking blame him he grew up in a household where like his parents are also not expressive emotionally at all 
Yeah. I mean, Kim can barely even cry at Joshua's memorial. Like, she's so emotionally repressed. And mm-hmm. when you grow up in a family like that, like, you learn that as a child. So then what do you do with all of these emotions? Like, they just come out in sometimes the worst ways. Like, I'm in therapy for that reason, too, because I grew up with family like that. I don't know how to communicate my needs sometimes. I don't know how to, like, express my emotions in a healthy way sometimes. Sometimes I have to, like, really fucking think about it. So I really felt for him with that. And then I saw a comment. Can I just say something really fast before you get to that? Um, I want to take that back. I don't think he's emotionally intelligent, actually. I think he's emotional. I think he... um, feels things very deeply. I don't think he's intelligent about those emotions insofar as he can't separate his emotional pain body from like his thinking self. Like he doesn't have the ability that you have to stop hammer time. Okay. (laughs) Should I really say that? Maybe I should frame that a little differently. Maybe I should lean on love instead of vitriol right now. Like he doesn't have the capacity, the intelligence to regulate the emotions. He's got the emotions. It's not that he doesn't feel it's just that he doesn't know what to do with them. So I would say that's emotional unintelligence. So I just want to take that back. That's my opinion. I mean, that's fair. But like also from my perspective, it took me seven years to learn how to do this. Mm-hmm. Like I still struggle with that. I still have things where they're like automatic responses because it's my programming. So like it takes a while to learn how to actually be emotionally intelligent. Yes. So he's got a long way ahead of him. Yes. And if he's not wanting to go to therapy, then it's an even longer way. A hundred percent. But I read this comment on Reddit that I wanted to bring up about this because I thought this was like chef's kiss perfectly said. But it came from user Majestic Scarcity 540 Weird take from me, but Ethan's love language seemed to be acts of service and Olivia's seemed to be words of affirmation and quality time. But Ethan wasn't good at communi- communicating and Olivia showed her love by words and quality time. So neither were having their needs met. Cooking and doing other wifely duties was more than likely considered an act of love to him, which I'm sure is how he w- is from how he was raised, which is why I think that was really hard focused towards the end of their relationship. Olivia was constantly focused on talking and spending time with Ethan to understand him, but she failed to see that his that this would not fill his love meter the way it would fill hers. Ethan sucked at communicating and would often take off on trips or go on places to do things without telling her, so he also failed to see that that wasn't filling her cup either until it was too late. Both failed to see what the other really meant. It wasn't about the cooking or the working on cars. It was about their cups not being filled on either side of the aisle. Yes. Oh my gosh. So well put. I thought that was so great. That's that's exactly exactly what I'm trying to say. That's his love language. That's how he received her love. And she's, or whoever that is, is exactly right. Olivia needed communication. Olivia needed that quality time. Yep. You know, every single time you run out to your vehicle and you spend eight hours under the hood and you don't talk to me or you take these trips to go fix a car in Cairo while I'm over here in Tampa somewhere and I don't hear from you, like you are not giving me love in a way that I can receive. So they were just missing each other. Two ships in the night, Beatrice. Oh, for sure. And I wonder if she didn't like communicate to him why she didn't want to cook anymore either like if she was like look it's not because i don't love you i don't feel like fucking cooking anymore i still care about you like we can still do other things or whatever like i wonder if she even had the capacity to say that because she's going through her deconstruction phase as well so she's dealing with a lot of emotions and so she's trying to figure it out all at the same time as figuring out their marriage so they had too much going on yeah, and they didn't have the tools Mm-mm. and the resources to know how to navigate their marriage. No way. <laughs> they keep talking about it. Neither of them did. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. So it's really sad. But I thought it was really cool that Ethan showed that level of self-reflection after that. I think that's, like, important. A lot of people give Ethan a lot of hate for being a big a bit of a dummy. And he is. Totally. But I think that this is, like, a good step in a good direction. Yes. With just this amount of self-reflection. And then he also calls Olivia out for her negativity and said that that a lot of that stemmed from her issues with her family, which is great. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Yeah. And then they show that picture of Lydia Grace and Olivia in the family structure with the other children. And I think Ethan is hitting on some truths. I wonder what Olivia thinks watching that back, like if she can actually cogitate on that think about it and receive that because i think he's spot on but i think because it's coming from ethan Mm -hmm. she probably won't 
receive that. Oh, no, I think it would trigger her. Mm -hmm. I think she'd be like, how dare you? Like, call out my family. Like, I'm dealing with that on my own. Like, she can't make the connections right now. And that's fine. Like, again, maybe ev everybody's figuring their shit out. But I don't think she's making the connections. Well, I mean, I don't know what's what's really happening. But I have hope for her. And just as Ethan is coming into some awareness about his own behavior and about his beliefs and his values, I think she is too in a legitimate and authentic way while a lot of what I see from her feels performative and put on, like I do think there is a process that's happening beneath the surface that is very important and that I think she's undertaking. And so she's also coming into different awarenesses, just in a different way. Maybe. But it's toxic, though. Some of the way that she's coming out about it is toxic. And that's like the issue. It's like you have to be able to recognize when you're Not being shitty. Not all of it is toxic, Beatrice. Like a lot of it is not toxic and is presented with that therapized TikTok speak, which none of us like and or believe. And so you were telling me via WhatsApp that she just sounds like a lot of these TikTok yes. inspo girlies who are just constantly speaking in this way mm -hmm. about these types of issues, specifically fundamentalist issues. Yeah. So she's coming across a lot like that. But I think even in the midst of that, she's trying to find her way. I hope so. Like, I think along the way, we put on the clothes of a lot of different types of awareness. That's true, yeah. We try it on, and then we take it off, and we put something else on. And I think we have to allow her, her youth and her process here. And although I think she's going to cringe when she's 40 looking back at some of the things that she's saying and doing. I hope so. As hopefully Ethan will as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that right now where she is, I think she's pretty good. I think she's okay. I think she's okay. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to see her like stuff on ever TV again <laughs> just on like, my television i like don't care about you milking cows or learning about sex like oh i don't God. give a shit when do you we... want to just get to that yeah let's just get there who cares about mariah and no. who cares about micah and his friend I don't. will i don't care about mariah cares well about okay them. i do care but i just mariah you got to give me something more than that tight little bun and your banana blazer, honey. Mariah. I know, oh my God. I mean, if you're going to reference some mysterious ghost of a man, sit down on that chair to that camera and talk to me about Please. it. If you want me to be interested and invested in your life and want me to continue to want you on my television, then you're going to have to talk to me, not just alluding to who this person is, sitting down with some rando production plant and talking about it in these like etheric sort of amorphous ways like talk to us about it or else go away and all you ever do is cry girl oh you're my so God. fucking morose it's so you're so cringe. maudlin the tears of a clown bitch Literally. i need you to stop get out you should travel just go like olivia go to saint lucia go to paris go meet some people eat some different food honey you're bringing me down i know and can we still can we stop talking about this mysterious heartbreak as if we don't know that he cheated on you like that's what we're referring to right i just want to know if he's married was I he mean, married the entire time because oh my god that'd be so barry great. is saying that he's the most duplicitous person he's ever met in his that life would be like so good. okay like max cheated but that wasn't so groundbreaking that we couldn't believe it like uh, i could yeah. believe that and if mariah dated some other guy and he cheated i could also believe that but if he's the most duplicitous person that barry ever met why was he married? Oh my God, that'd be so good. Well, allegedly he's supposed to come in one of these season uh, episodes. Yeah, I think the final. Like the he's supposed to be there, right? The final season. At like her concert or something. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I would care more him. though if you talked more about it. Like yes. I'm just sick of your, I'm sick of your talking heads. Yes. I'm sick of it. I know, me too. Sorry. another character that's like acting like they have it all together. I'm like, girl, you're five years old. This girl returned to her religion like the, Dog returns to his barf, honey, which comes from the Bible. That's a scripture from the Bible. Comes back to the barf and is back at the trough and is sucking at the teat of religion again and fundamentalism. Now, that's interesting to me. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about that? I mean, I saw you get baptized and I cringed with everybody else because we have a conversation. God, we need to produce these shows. We really do. <laughs> I'm watching currently The Braxtons, which oh, yeah. is, I think, on WeTV. And I've I watched every them. season of The Braxton Family Values. And in four episodes, they've had family grief counseling. We've had confrontations in the sisterhood. We've had deep conversations about death and dying and the wow. people left behind. And I'm not saying it's the, the happiest type of content, but it feels real. Now, not all of it's real. Yeah, Some of, of it's not real, but there's enough there that's real mm -hmm. that I am interested and I want to continue to watch. This is exactly what Plathville is losing. Oh, yeah. Me. And this is why we love this show is because it was like one of the last 
shows on TLC pretty much that was like real. Mm -hmm. Besides Sister Wives, like we don't really have a lot of real TLC stuff. Like we have 90 Day Fiance. Oh God. But it's like the same shit. It's only the first season that's that's good because yes. after that they become aware they like do. AI. <laughs> they become aware of the cameras and now they're producing themselves. Yeah. It's only like the first season of The Other Way or yeah. Before the 90 Days and then it all sucks. And then it's trash. Yeah. It's just a bunch of clout goblins or The Last Resort. Like we need more of oh that. Oh God. I cannot wait. Gino and Jasmine are supposed to be on that. I know and I cannot wait. Oh God. We're going to have to cover that. Let's get to the sex party. Like Girl. Why? I've been avoiding it because I'm just cringing Why? so hard. Why do we need a sex education workshop when we're all in our 20s? And why are we recycling these dweebs? Like, can we just explore each other's bodies like God intended? Like, that's the natural way of learning about sex. Why do we have to have some sex educator with a fucking vulva pil pillow and dildos? Teaching these young kids who don't want to be there. No, they're just getting their five hundred dollars <laughs> a day paycheck from TLC. They're pretending they're friends with Olivia, and we're having these awkward conversations simply to facilitate Olivia saying that she doesn't know about sex and that exactly. she has shame around sex, and that she wasn't able to talk to Ethan about sex because he didn't want to do the things that she wanted to do. Oh, uh, one interruption! Moment, oh God. Hi, handsome. Oh Thank you. God. What's that? What's that? Mind your own business. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much, my love. Oh my Where's God. mine? You still handsome. What were we saying? Um, Olivia's sex party. Yeah, it is so cringe, dude. And the whole thing is just to give her another opportunity to slam Ethan. Yes. Which she also did on her Instagram by yep. saying he never made her come. And like, mm -hmm. nobody needs to know that. No, nobody it needs to so know that. It is so déclassé, honey. And like, Again, I say, are we ignoring that Ethan grew up the same fucking way that you did? Like, why aren't we talking about how he didn't know anything about sex either? He probably didn't know how to bang you good because he came in one second because he's a virgin and you got married when you guys were virgins, allegedly, even though you guys were blowing each other in the church parking lot. <laughs> like, what is it here? You don't know about sex or like, you know about some of it. I don't know. And like we can have an interesting conversation about purity culture and like mm -hmm. how fundamentalist religion I is wish all we about would. the men. Like that's interesting to me too. But like again, it's just to shit on Ethan. And did you notice she wanted to do this sex party because this long distance boyfriend that she's talking to says that sex is very important to him. Mm -hmm. He very much enjoys it. And he's a very experienced Lothario. And so she wants to not look stupid and not be embarrassed in front of somebody so experienced. So like that's what this whole sex thing was about but is that for real or is that just her way to get a message out to ethan that she's with with a real lothario that she's like getting it's experience. hard to really parse through the things that she says to find out what's true yeah I but maybe know. she did meet a man who is very sexually adventurous and likes to express himself through his sexuality that's fantastic that's and when great. you find yourself a good lover honey it does change your whole world i'm sure but I don't know. Um, I think she's not a reliable narrator. And this whole thing felt like a setup. I didn't enjoy it mm -hmm. because I'm in my 30s and I don't need to know about <laughs> clitori. No. I don't need to know about the vulva and how it opens and stuff. I don't want to think about those weird dudes in that oh room God, looking know. at the vulva pillow. Uh -uh. It was so bad. Like, why did we have Capiche again? I don't know. <laughs> like, he literally. doesn't have a girlfriend. Has he ever seen a vulva? I don't know. <laughs> they were totally paid actors him and the other guy of course i don't know what his name was then there's lydia grace what are you doing I, she's weird uh, she's she's weird, weird to me like her vibes are off because i don't think her and olivia like each other at all i don't think they're friends no i think she's getting paid to yeah. drive her happy ass from arizona to la to, to film these weird scenes with wigs and cows and Vulva pillows. I don't understand it. Well, and speaking of Olivia and Lydia Grace, Olivia made a huge post on Instagram like just a couple days ago where she revealed the face of her infamous long distance boyfriend. And he's. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a lesbianic. You're not attracted to men. So would you really I'm know? Not... Well, I mean, maybe you do. I'm no, sure lesbians I'm... can identify an attractive man. I can definitely look at a man and be like, oh, yeah, I can see why women want to fuck him. Yeah. But this guy. No, you didn't feel it. Mid. You didn't see it? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Yeah. 
bland mayonnaise. Yeah. He looked like a dweeb and a he dork. Like a total. I'm like, you're the Lothario that she's so strong. And over. I'm like, Olivia, you are such a 10. Uh, for real. You are such a knockout. You're and it's so not gorge. about appearance. Like, it, he, maybe he's a wonderful person. And maybe there's a lot of other complimentary, supplemental things that he brings to the table. But, Olivia, do you know how beautiful you are? Why are you hanging out with dorks i mean that's what i don't understand but i'm being judgy but anyway so olivia posted this she posted this 20 picture thing right lydia grace is not in a single one and lydia grace comments on it and is like <gasps> really so roy her new boyfriend's name roy okay okay who names a kid roy that's Whatever. the name of my roomba <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> but roy she's like roy makes the cut and i don't and Olivia- Wait, Olivia's boyfriend's name Roy? Yes. Oh, somebody help me. Yeah. Somebody give me some oxygen. <laughs> this 25-year-old guy is named Roy. And he doesn't look like a Roy. Like, when I picture a Roy, I picture, like, a rugged yeah. man. Sure. He's you in a truck. I mean? This He's guy is, like, yeah. probably just never picked up a car wrench in his life. No. Doesn't know how to do anything. No. No offense. I'm being so fucking You are mean. really being bad. <laughs> I'm being so But mean. I mean, I just, when you compare and contrast with Olivia, who is like Aphrodite. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Maybe he's got a good dick. Maybe. I mean. I mean, a good dick covers a multitude of sins. I know. I'm just saying. You tell me every time. Well, it's true. Impotent man. Oh. If you know, you know. Okay. Patrons. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't get me talking now. Um, but that was it, right? We yeah. had to suffer through that. And uh, we had some previews for next week. Yeah, which was the Plath family's all going to be under one roof in some Airbnb or whatever for Mariah's music video or something. Or they're going to do some Plath music video. I don't fucking know, but I'm excited to see. Okay. Olivia doing speed dating. Nobody cares. Nobody Why are cares. we still doing this? Why are What's we doing happening? it? happening? Why are we speed dating if you're already dating a guy? Long distance. Just send her to therapy. I'll watch that. I would totally watch that with Dr. Orna. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bitch. Or that would be so good. Yes. Jesus. And then we also have Barry talking about Mariah's ex. Right. But I'm like, I want to see this guy. Is he? We're not going to see him. Uh, I think we're going to see him. I think he's going to appear. I don't think we're going to see oh him. Oh, my God. I, I think really we're going to so. see him from the back. We're not going to see him. What? Because he's married. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> He like, shows up with his two kids. <laughs> well, maybe it's like a Randall Emmett situation. Oh, my God. Maybe. Oh my God, please. I can't wait. Yeah. But I think the season is almost over. And actually, frankly, I'm ready for it. I'm fine with that because S- sister wives, girls coming out next week. And then are we going to start 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days? Is that coming out? Yeah. No, I think it came out. started this Sunday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then I yeah. think we've got a blind Nigerian Ooh. who is going to marry some chick who believes in aliens and nice. who is completely wiggity whack. Great. We've got somebody who's, I think, a paraplegic and who's oh. having a different experience from the rest of us. Oh. And I just, yeah, it looks pretty interesting i think that we would like it we should get into it yeah i mean i like before the 90 days okay so maybe after welcome to plathville yeah we will have sister wives and we will have before the 90 days on the general pod yes you're welcome you're welcome we do so much work for you and you guys haven't even checked out our patreon i mean come on there's so much good stuff there (laughs) all right do we want to make a totally different episode for unexpected or do you just want to speed run unexpected all right we're gonna stay here and talk unexpected let's just get it done because the season finale was last week the week that i was sick i'm sorry i mean it's not like you missed much no girl so why don't we just cover that and put a pin in it all right well let's start with kaylee with graham and becky honey and becky meth mom oh my god girl showing up and eating all that food i that was going through mandy's cupboards honey with her weird messed out boyfriend dude if somebody did that in my house, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, Mandy, when are you going to explode? She sat there seething the entire time. I'm jumping ahead. I couldn't believe that. So Kaylee's home from the hospital. She was in the hospital for like a week or whatever because she had an emergency C-section. Mm-hmm. And Graham was supposed to stay a whole week at their house to help Kaylee with the baby and be a dad or whatever. He like didn't want to change diapers. He's like making Kaylee's friend change a diaper which i'm just like that poor girl 
<laughs> she don't want to do that. It was a poopy diaper, and he was asking her to put some sort of ointment on the baby's pee pee. On his pee pee. I'm like, dude, come on. Yeah, he slept the entire time. Uh huh. And he's resentful because he had to stay up all night changing diapers oh, while you. Kaylee was recovering from her emergency C section and 50 hour labor. You punk ass bitch. Yes. And then not even 24 hours later, he leaves with his friend. He's like, I got to go home. I got to go back to school. I got to work. And my mom needs me to come home. I got to take care of my mom. She's got mental health issues. She's bipolar. She needs somebody unlike my kid. Yeah. And my girlfriend. Yeah. No, my mom. My methed out mom needs me. So if I'm that mother, I'm going to take that phone call from you, son. And I'm going to be like, no, uh-huh. you're staying right there mm-hmm. and I'll pick you up. You can go to school and I'll take you back when you're done with school. But no, you're staying right there because you're a father now. Yep. You're a father now. Yeah. You fucked around. You find out. Yeah. So have fun with your new responsibility. But mm-hmm. nope, Becky totally just comes over to pick him up, I think. And that's when she's eaten in the kitchen. Well, she sits down and she takes the grandbaby and then he starts to cry. And so she gives right. the grandbaby back. And this is where we get the interstitial from Mandy, who's like, she will come over to the house while the baby is sleeping. Pick up the baby, hold the baby. The baby starts crying and then she'll give him back to somebody else. <laughs> and now the baby's up. Yeah. And so you say you're coming over to help, but you're actually taking away our help. You're taking away our peace because you're here just sitting on the couch like a lump of meth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you're eating chips and salsa in the kitchen. And pizza. Like, I where did he not. get the pizza? So he's just, so her friend is just going through the cupboards into the refrigerator, mm-hmm. grabbing whatever kind of food, eating their food, and then bouncing. And then leaving. Dude, Kaylee is never going to see Graham, like, at all. He is not going to be present. He's not going to pay child support. I mean, I hope they have some kind of agreement where he is paying child support. But I don't think, I think at the end of this episode, she says she's got no money from him. Right. For diapers, for anything. Girl. Becky, you should be paying something. Yep. Toward the upkeep of your grandchild. She's bipolar. I can't get out of bed. She's bipolar. I can't get out of bed. Oh God. Unless there's a meth pipe. <laughs> yeah. Then I can get out of bed. So fucking stupid. I feel bad for Kaylee, but at the same time, I'm like, girl. Oh, well, but I mean, Mandy, you drove your uh, whole ass child at 14 years old. Kaylee was 14 years 11. old. You drove her. 11. They've been together since they were 11. Drove her since the time she got her period. All the way, 45 minutes to Graham's house, Becky's house, dropped your kid off, went somewhere else. Didn't you didn't care. drop her off and, uh, and stay there mm-hmm. and wait for her to come back. You, you dropped her off and you went somewhere else. And so inevitably, they fucked. Yeah. And Mandy, this is what you get. Yep. Sit there and seethe about Becky yep. and seethe about Graham. She's so mad. Oh, she's so mad. She hates them. And she's going to end up raising this kid, too. Of course. Because Kaylee's also a little Spoiled. bit of a brat. Yep. <laughs> she's going to want to go back to cheerleading and she's going to want to go do all these things. Like, she says she loves Easton a lot, but she's also a 15-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean... Her priorities are not going to be on this baby. No. They're going to be having fun, going to prom, doing stupid stuff. Maybe. I, I don't so. know. Yeah. Mandy's going to definitely be the one to stand in the gap. Mm-hmm. No 100%. questions asked. Yep. Then we have Jenna's dumbass. She's back in Myrtle Beach. I guess her and Delaney had a falling out. Nobody cares. Yep. But she took a pregnancy test that she's pregnant with JJ's big big headed baby. What a shock when he confessed on the couch next to his mother that they only raw dog. <laughs> so like what a shock that now she's pregnant. Who would That's have thunk how it, it works? Yeah. God, I can't with people like this. So she's a little worried because she still has to hammer out custody with Aiden. Uh-huh. Who is up in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And if she can't do that, then she might have to relocate. And she doesn't think JJ will relocate back to Pennsylvania. So she doesn't know what's going to happen. And she's really scared. She actually calls Delaney, which I kind of loved. Yeah. She calls Delaney because she's going to take that pregnancy test. Delaney is on her way to class. And Delaney tells us on the couch, like, I haven't heard from her. Like, I came down to Myrtle Beach for her birthday, and JJ doesn't like me, and apparently JJ is the one behind her no longer talking to me. Now, all of a sudden, you might be pregnant. You want to call me? Okay. Mm. So she was very dismissive with yeah. Jenna, which Jenna deserved. Yeah, oh, totally. Jenna yeah. finds out she's pregnant. She puts the cup 
She puts a little cup that says the best dad or whatever with her pee stick in a box. Nasty. Ew. So gross. Gives it to JJ with his big old head. Yep. And all those curls on those head. Oh my God. Mega mind. He and seemed happy. I mean, he was kind of like whatever in the moment. But afterwards, he's like, yeah, I'm going to step up. I'll be a dad of two and whatever. He's got like one brain cell. So In that big head? Only yeah. one brain cell? Yeah, the way he talks. That's so a slow. marvel if it's only one brain cell. But <laughs> do you notice that they're living in his mom's house? And yeah. did you notice how palatial and expansive that house was? Yes, very so nice. So Jenna and JJ have a great life. They do. On their mother's dime. Mm -hmm. So of course they're going to bring more children into the equation. Of Why course. wouldn't you? Well, and I guess Jenna also makes money from Instagram and stuff like that. So. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a house then. Provide for yourself. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. And then we have the bulk of this episode, which is Lily and Lawrence's wedding, which nobody cares about. <laughs> nobody cares. Why, Why like, are these people Why? on the show? Why are they on the show? Oh We're not God. expecting... We're not unexpecting. No. We're just still together with the kids from the other unexpected We're just season. Watching your fucking wedding. Talking about how you got your period, how your titties are saggy because your baby drank all the milk out of them. Oh, God. And then watching you get absolutely fucking shit faced. That was great. That was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that was so fucking funny because right. it's embarrassing. Because, like, you're so fucking drunk. Like, she's slurring. Lawrence is like, I've never seen her this drunk. But I thought that was sweet. She was happy. I mean, she really wanted this wedding to happen. Yeah. She looked beautiful. Yeah. He looked handsome. Yeah. The kids were dancing and partying. It was cute. And it looked like a nice time. So good for Lily. But now, get off my television. Do not come back for another I season. I never want to see you again. Ever. And I'm like, why was this episode 35 minutes of just your wedding? Yeah. They got nothing. I mean, what? Did we mean, not get any finale Jesus with Anaya crackers. and Daquan? No. Or freaking Nate and Emily? Yeah. Like, we're just going to leave them? What about Nate and Emily? Chop liver? Nate's my favorite. Me too. And I love Daquan. I don't like Ania or Anaya very I don't much. Like her but I mean, I, we should have been able to see where everybody is at the end of the show. But nope, it's over. Nope. That's all we've got. But I mean, overall, like the beginning of the season was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty trashy. Yeah. I think previous seasons were way were better. better. Yeah. yeah. And I would have liked if they had some kind of a reunion so we can see where they are now. Like, yeah. what's happening with Nate Give and me Emily? A tell -all. Like, let me know what's going on. But yes. there's no tell all. There's no reunion. I don't like that a lot of these shows don't do tell alls. Well, they used to. They've had reunions before for In Unexpected. Unexpected? Yes. Bitch. Why not this time? Why are they taking it away from us? So if it comes back next year, are we going to watch it, do you think? I mean, if it's new people, if it's a bunch of new teenagers getting mm -hmm. pregnant and stuff, sure. But if but Lily if and Lawrence come back? No, no? absolutely not. <laughs> I don't care about their married life. And that's our final answer yes. on the matter. Agreed. Okay. Well, well, we got that done. That's it. We got that under the belt. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Yes. So I think that the next thing we're doing is wrapping up Sister Wives Season 5. Uh -huh. And then we are going right into Sister Wives Season 19, Aww. which is honestly what we've been waiting for. Can't wait. And we're going to be wrapping up Welcome to Plathville. So our schedule might be shifting a little bit. Yeah. And we'll figure it out and we'll let you know. But we'll be here for the bullshit. We will. You can bet on that facts now is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here Badges! well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review it really ah! helps us grow the pod so more people can know about us we really appreciate it thank you make sure to come back to hear us break down that final episode of sister and wives break dance. and and break dance <laughs> that would be fantastic we know you like to twerk, honey. I do like you to got that apple bottom juice. Anyway, <laughs> come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>